What's up YouTube? I'm the nice one and today we are making a skeleton, a spooky skeleton man uh, person and uh, yeah, I figured we might as well make a character or a monster that you typically see in a fantasy series and fantasy adventure games and shows and stuff like that. So yeah, let's just make a stereotypical uh, skeleton, skeleton monster zombie kind of guy. So instead of me rambling on why don't we uh, just jump straight into it okay cool okay let's just jump straight into it so start by basing making a basic cube we're not actually going to use the base model we use in previous models we're going to make, make this from scratch so start with a basic cube add a couple edge loops around the center of the cube and then extrude out the x-axis side of the cube to make a make the basic shape of the cheeks and then start rotating the edges to start making kind of a rounded skeleton, a rounded skull type of a shape. Basically what I'm trying to do is block out the general uh, structure of the skeleton, of the skull, before adding in actual details like the eye sockets, the nose sockets, teeth, and stuff like that. I'm trying to make it as rough, I'm roughing it out first before adding detail, and that's typically what you should probably do as well, just so you don't spend too much time like screwing around, getting too finessed about the little, little details. So that's what you see me doing here, roughing out a general shape by using the basic transform features you have in Maya. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to continue by adding maybe, maybe smooth adding it out, maybe had adding suggestions of where the cheekbone is going to be, like that you see that area protruding out there, that's where the cheekbone is. Um, and also, uh, I'm going to clean up how the front teeth, so the top of your teeth is going to look as well. I'm going to add a few more edge loops and just basically, at this point, I'm pretty much just finessing this rough shape of the skeleton to get to a point that I'm happy with. And now what I'm doing is adding a few more edge loops and I'm getting prepared to add where the eye sockets and the nose sockets are going to be and also making the cheekbones protrude out a little bit more. So that's what you see me doing there. I use the target weld feature to merge a couple vertices and I delete the edges and I delete the face and create a new plane there where that's and that's going to indicate where the nose gap or the nose should be of the skeleton. I'm going to do the same thing here for the eyes in just a second after I finish tweaking the cheeks. Um, yeah, so you see me kind of do that right now, fixing up the cheeks because your cheekbones actually protrude out farther than where your eye sockets are sh should be. Um, I would highly suggest looking up uh, skeleton or skull reference art or reference medical imagery so you get an idea. But here you see me rotating some of the edge edges to make the general shape of where I'm going to add the eye sockets in the future. And you see how they're rounded up there. And uh, yeah, I'm just getting ready to use that area to uh, basically extrude in so that it represents uh, kind of like a, a hole in the skeleton to where your eyes would normally be. Now I'm just going to tweak the top of the head a little bit more so it's a little more rounded in a proper way that I think looks looks best. You can also do this in a sculpture, but I always end up doing kind of uh, box modeling. Um, but yeah, that's what you see me doing here. So I'm extruding in, control E, extruding in to show where the eye holes are going to be for this skeleton. And then I'm just tweaking some of the edges a little bit more to kind of highlight the cheekbones a bit more appropriately and highlight the nose just a bit more appropriately as well. And then I'm going to extrude in the nose here. And now there you go. Now we got a basic shape of how the skull, skull is going to look. And it's not looking too bad. Um, might want to add a little more detail in terms of how um, the skull actually is. Um, but yeah, at this point, I, I feel like I'm doing not too bad in terms of how the style I'm trying to go for, which is kind of a cuter skull kind of feel. And I also want to really focus on showing off the cheekbones using the basic transform features. And uh, yeah, looking not too bad. I'm going to fix up the back of the back of the skull here by using the basic transformer again to kind of extrude it out. Um, and uh, yeah, so now we're going to move on to the jaw. So make another cube, add a few more edge loops um, around the center and the horizontal center so that you always know where your axis of symmetry is. And basically, I'm going to use those edge loops to basically start roughing out a general shape of how I wanted this jaw to be. So you see me kind of rounding it off at the bottom so it's more curved, which you might expect in a jaw. And then also pointing it out so it's more of like a butt chin kind of thing. And uh, yeah, okay, cool. So once I'm happy with basically how the chin is looking, I'm going to select the edges over here and extrude it back 
uh, to start creating the shape of the jaw. So basically the technique is extrude, pull out, extrude, pull out. Control E, Q to deselect, um, W for position, and then just keep repeating that until you get the general shape of the jaw you want. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how I made this jaw at this point. I'm connecting it, making sure that the actual, the connection to the skull uh, reaches all the way to the top. And then I'm just going to do a quick, a uh, couple quick modifications just to clean it up a little bit more. And uh, yeah, I think we're doing, we're in decent shape for this skull. Uh, I'm going to tweak some of the top mouth, uh, front teeth kind of area. Again, bring up the cheek bones because you don't actually see the fleshy part of the cheek. You see your cheekbones and that's how you get that kind of very sharp structure. Now I'm just going to make the teeth. So this is very simple to create another cube. Um, add a couple edge loops around the center and the right uh, and the left of it. Uh, and then basically what you're going to do is just use the smoothing feature. So you see me here creating a cube, scaling it down to the shape of a tooth, adding an edge loop right down in the center, bringing it up to the top so that it looks a little more kind of the shape of a tooth you might expect. And then I'm just going to position it to where I expect maybe his front teeth to be. And then kind of duplicating it along and just fit fitting it to the actual jaw we had created before. Um, actually, in a second, I think you'll see me switch it to the opposite side because instead of duplicating, like instead of recreating this teeth, I'm just going to use a mirror function in the future to kind of just duplicate it perfectly symmetrical onto the opposite side. And so that's super helpful whenever you're making a mesh that's symmetrical, typically character mesh. It's uh, the symmetry function is very, very handy. And so yeah, you just see me adding the tooth. I probably should have counted how many teeth a human human being has and where the teeth are. But again, this is kind of like a fantasy kind of stylized character kind of thing. So if he if he has a few extra teeth, I think I think that'll be okay. Okay, cool. So now I'm just gonna start making the top of the teeth, top of the tooth right here. Um, I'm gonna again do the exact same thing that I did with the bottom row, duplicate, scale, position, and rotate, duplicate, scale, position, rotate, using your basic functions, basic transform functions on the Q, W, E, R um, of your keyboard if you're using the default bindings. And uh, yeah, don't worry about the second half because we are gonna mirror that onto the opposite side for now. Uh, so yeah, you're just gonna focus on the first half. Now what we're gonna do is start making the spinal cord. And so I'm gonna just make a cube, make it more into a rectangular shape and add edge loops at the top, closer to the top and bottom face. And then I'm gonna scale the top and bottom face a little bit more so that it makes this kind of a, kind of like a, a kind of like a skeleton, like a spinal column, a spinal uh, segment, a segment of the spinal cord that you might expect. And basically I'm gonna use that as a base asset and just duplicate it and be pretty much just kind of Duplicate it and rotate it and bring it down along the, until I create a basic S-curve spinal column shape. Okay, great. And so now what you see me doing here is I'm going to extrude out the another one of the spinal column shapes because this is going to be a base asset we use, reuse a lot, and just transform a little bit to create the starting of the shoulder. Um, and so you see me doing that here. We're creating basically where the shoulder and the rib cage is going to start. Um, so you see the shoulder bone right there. Obviously these aren't perfectly <laughs> medically accurate, but again, recommend looking at medical drawings or other illustrations for reference. Now we're creating the sternum, uh, which is kind of like a T-bone type of thing, um, which connects the rib cage to the back of the skull, to the, to the spinal column. And uh, yeah, that's what you just see me doing here. I'm just trying to make a general shape, T-shape, that's pointed at the bottom and maybe has a little bit of kind of imperfections along the side and then just extruding out along the left and right side to create that T-shape. And uh, yeah, that's what you see me doing here. Uh, and again, I'm using, the skeleton, I'm using the skeleton pieces we added there for the shoulders as reference part, so for where this uh, sternum is gonna fit. Okay, awesome, so we got a sternum now and I'm gonna do some basic, looks like I'm doing some basic transforms just to make sure it fits the character model a little bit. And now what I'm gonna start doing is actually making the actual rib cage. Um, so again, start with a cube as opposed to a plane and add a couple of edge loops and basically just start using the extrude position kind of technique I sh I've been talking, always talking about to basically shape a general box into this, into like the curvature of a rib cage. Cause we'll be adding detail later on. 
So that's what you see me doing here. It's basically extrude, Q to deselect, W for position, and just keep going along that way. And maybe like start curving it upwards as well. And uh, yeah, so you see me duplicating here. I end up deleting these uh, rib cages because I realized that I could just simply add the detail into one asset and then duplicate that instead as opposed to recreating everything. So that's what you see me doing here. I'm gonna add a bevel to each of the segment, each of the center segments, and then add a so a bevel with a fraction of 0 0.5, and then a segment of one, and then scale up that single segment to make it look like it's um, to make it look like it's different pieces of bone connected together. So yeah, that's what you see me do in bevel, and then uh, select the center segment and increase the size so that it looks yeah a little more sharper and a little more bone like. Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Um, again, looking at reference art will really help you kind of make an accurate or at least like semi-accurate uh, model that looks a little more appropriate. And uh, yeah, okay, cool. So now that I'm happy, pretty much, pretty much, I'm pretty much happy with how this rib cage piece is looking. I'm pretty much going to duplicate this down a couple times um, to basically represent the rest of the rib cage and do a couple of scaling. Uh, do a couple scales and uh, transforms just to make it look like it's more of a curved um, kind of oval shape. Now what you see me doing here is creating the shoulder blade, uh, which is basically kind of like a triangular shape. Um, yeah, again, medical reference art is definitely going to be one of your best friends when you're doing this kind of skeleton piece. You can simplify it even more if you really want to, but I just like having a little bit of detail like that. And basically that's what you see me doing. I have a cube and I enabled the smooth preview feature because that's what I was going to do ultimately. You can keep this low poly if you want, but uh, I'm using the smooth preview feature. And uh, basically I just made a kind of a rough uh, plane, like a rough kind of like plate, kind of triangular plate that represents the shoulder blade. Uh, and yeah, I was pretty much happy with that. At this point now I'm going to move on towards the tailbone to finish off the rest of the spinal column. Again, start with a cube, scale down the bottom to make it a triangle, a pointed shape. Maybe rotate the top so that again it looks more of like a diamond, kind of a, a diamond kind of shape. And basically, just start transforming it, making sure I'm, I like using the smooth feature a lot for this one, just to just because it helps it look a little more organic as opposed to blocky. And uh, yeah, adding a few more edge loops. And yeah, pretty much gonna bring it up, scale it up here. Again, your reference art is gonna definitely be one of your most helpful features when you're doing this kind of thing. So yeah, after at this point, the video is going to skip a little bit because I had tried to make a hip bone before. Uh, I My first pass at the hip bone was really, really much a fail, so I didn't want to show you that, but that's what you see in the back there. This is my more successful pass at the hip bone. So start with a cube and basically start making kind of like a half cylinder shape that goes around the, kind of matches the curvature of the spine of the rib cage and then ends at the center of the tailbone um, and then extrude down deselecting not selecting all the faces because the it turns out that the hip bone actually has two holes basically two holes where they uh, where one hole is where the um, your legs connect your top your thigh bone connects and then the other hole I imagine is for reproductive organs um, again don't maybe don't quote me on that but double check but Looking at reference art, there's basically two holes that a, that a hip bone comes with. And so that's what you see me doing here. So I'm just basically making that kind of hip bone shape where that first hole is going to be the front. And then I'm going to create another hole right here that's actually going to be the where I connect the legs. So again, using the bridge tool to deleting the faces and then using the bridge tool to reconnect and then just doing some simple transforms to fit the skeleton, to fit the, the hip bones into place where it needs to be. And uh, yeah, okay, great. So I was pretty, pretty much pretty happy with how that hip bone was looking at that point and also how it was kind of curving into our character. Next, what you see me doing is doing just a, fine, a few last tweaks to the, to the hip bone to get it to a point that I like. And also basically bring in the thickness a little bit. It was a little, it was a little much. It was a little over the board, overboard in terms of how big and thick the hip bones was when I looked back at other reference art. But basically a few more tweaks to get it to a point that I like. And then once I was happy with that, I did the mirror mesh feature just to make sure it looked okay. 
Now the video cut a little bit because I want to bring in an old model that I created as reference for height. So don't mind that back model, it's just a reference for height. Please feel free to use whatever technique you want. But basically here I'm making the legs. And so you see me making this kind of initial, uh, this initial bone that connects to your thigh um, when you're rigging. And uh, yeah, okay, great. So I'm basically making this bone. It has that L kind of shape to it so that it kind of is able to connect with the hip bone a little more appropriately. But basically we're following the same technique we had used to make the spinal column. Um, and yeah, okay, great. So basically just doing a couple transforms, positioning the that bone where I want it to be. And again, looking at reference art is definitely, I would highly suggest doing that when you're making a skeleton. And then now when I'm making the kind of the lower leg portion, I'm taking a spinal column asset, scaling it down and extruding it to basically scaling it to fit how I want the kind of ankle part or the lower party leg below the knee to fit and then duplicating the upper leg bone to represent kind of a sec separate segment where your calf is. And now I'm just working on the feet. So I'm going to make very simple feet by taking a cube, adding a couple edge loops around the center, and then extruding out to make the toes. And then really much, very much relying on the smooth preview feature to make it look a little more appropriate. This is by no means representative of how actual um, leg like foot bones work but I was just trying to keep it stylized and frankly I was getting kind of tired <laughs> working on this one this was a bit of a longer process and uh, yeah so I was pretty much happy with how this was I may, might kind of do a couple of tweaks to make it look more like an appropriate foot showing where the where the uh, the flat of the foot is and also showing where the arch is and stuff like that these are just basic tweaks you can apply to yours and uh, yeah, now we got a nice leg. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing now. I'm going to take the spinal column bone, I'm going to duplicate it, and then basically transform, and then make a big ball section there to indicate where it's going to connect to the shoulder blade. Um, because this is going to represent the arm, that basically the bicep of the of this uh, model when you start rigging it. And then I'm going to take the leg bone again and duplicate that, and use that. also reuse that asset for making the forearm. Forearm in this model is made out of two bones. Um, and so you see me kind of scaling up the one bone and then bring, duplicating the arm bicep bone and bringing it to where the forearm is so that they connect a little more naturally. And now what you see me doing is creating the hands. So again, starting with a cube, adding a few edge loops uh, to indicate where the hands are going to be. Um, and yeah, so add a few more edge loops similar to what we did with the foot. So add a bunch of edge loops and then uh, add a few more edge loops that are going to represent the kind of the gap between your fingers. Um, and then select the faces, every other face, to extrude it out to create actual fingers. Um, making sure that you extrude twice so that your it looks like it has at least two joints because your fingers, your fingers actually have three, but this model only, um, I kept it simple by making it only have two joints in the fingers. But in the future, if you want to do three for rigging purposes, I would highly suggest that. And then just working on the knuckles there, and then just finally extruding out a thumb um, at that left around the side of the hand. And yeah, so I was pretty happy with that. So thankfully, we're no longer doing the mitten hands, you might, as you might have gotten used to in my other models. Now what we're just going to do is mirror over a bunch of the mesh so that it is finally perfectly symmetrical on both sides. So you see me mirroring over the teeth there, and then you'll see me mirror over the shoulder blade and the hands and the arms and the legs next and the rib cage, just to make sure it's perfectly symmetrical on both sides as uh, bones should be. Uh, obviously in nature, they aren't, aren't always like that, but in this case, this character worked out decently by using the mirror function, so that definitely helped a lot. Anyway, that's pretty much it, and there you go. Now you have a cool little skeleton person that you can go ahead and rig. It'll definitely be a lot easier to rig this one since it follows more of a traditional T pose. Uh, but yeah, okay, great. So um, that's pretty much it. So hopefully y'all found this video helpful. Let me know down below what you might want to see next. Um, let me know if, if you have any tips for me actually to improve my kind of process and my techniques. And uh, yeah, okay, I'll catch you in the next video. Okay, cool. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching the video. If you like my content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. 
Let me know down below what you want to see next or just check out some of these other great videos. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you later.